network overloads and delay in transfer of critical information. The other aspect pertains to assurance of data transfer and data security. While security is essential, the selected technology should ensure that the desired latencies are maintained. The selection of the computing devices for various configurations required in the BMS is equally important. The performance of a device cannot be compromised, nor can the form factor, weight, and ease of operation. ...person in time. And therefore, it affects how battlefield will be managed from the tactical to the strategic level. More so, it also provides a great amount of edge. It provides a force multiplier effect in how an individual, a subunit, an entity of the force will respond to various situations as they come by. As I look at it, battlefield management system ensures that all activities within the operational environment are taken care of in terms of decision, in terms of command, and in terms of how that decision will be implemented. And these need to be fused together so that we have a system which is robust enough to take on the rigors and the needs of the soldier who operates in a very tough environment. The Indian Army looks at full spectrum dominance in any conflict that it may come out to. And therefore, what is needed is that we have great amount of superior knowledge and situa situational awareness at all times, which allows us to ensure that we can be proactive and we can take on across the spectrum of conflict any eventuality in a timely manner. This also implies that there is a need for network centricity because it is these networks and the passage of information along these networks which will allow quick reaction, which will allow quick passage and which will allow a soldier to pull in or push in information where it is required. And the project that the Army is undertaking now aspires to allow us to achieve this kind of capability which will bring us much more superior to any adversary in the type of situation that we will face. When we look at the BMS, it comprises two parts. One is the hardware part and the other is the software part. Hardware has its own challenges because you have to configure it to the various entities that exist in any force. You have entities which will be comparatively stationary, which will have higher means of mobility, and you will have entities which probably only will be foot mobile. And therefore, it's a challenge how this hardware has to be engineered so that it can take care of this entire spectrum. Similarly, the software has its own challenges and the challenge is in ensuring that it remains temper proof, it remains confined to the hardware that we have designed, it ensures that the type of information that we are looking for can be easily provided and it is a, a software which allows you to speak to all other systems in the force that come by. Because a standalone system will never work in the type of organization that we work in. We have large number of systems that are coming in, as the Deputy Chief gave out, and all systems must have capability to speak to each other. And that is a great challenge so far as software development is concerned. And therefore, BMS will be a challenge, and I'm quite sure that delegates who have come here and the uh, Various people from the academy who are here will be able to educate during the course of seminar on how we are going to go about these two challenges so that the forces can get a system which is robust, a system which cannot be hacked into, 
a system which is temper proof system which allows a foot soldier to a tactical entity which is moving on a vehicle to communicate with each other and a system that allows the soldier to get superior information for early and good decision making it should aid in decision making otherwise it will only remain information and will not be able to assist the soldier and the commanders in the type of things they want to do at the same time we also need to guard against ensuring that there is no information overload there is a tendency that in our bid to push as much information as is possible to the man down below he gets overloaded and probably he will not be able to take a quick decision so this filtering of information the type of checks that need to be ensured would form part of the architecture that you are designing we also feel that a system cannot be only army specific today the conflict is going to be a joint service environment conflict will entail the employment of other two services along with the army and therefore any system design must cater for interoperability with the other two services otherwise a system will not be able to deliver in times of conflict because if the other two services are not integrated into it then joint operations will never become a reality and joint operations are not at the headquarters level but they are at a tactical level where joint task forces can operate on a given strategic direction and therefore there is a need to ensure that our systems are able to make use of networks that are designed for joint services satish kaura officiating director of the general information systems integrated headquarters of the mod major general rajesh pant deputy chief of the army staff lieutenant general v s tonk chairman cii defense committee on r and d technology and indigenization and ceo tata power sct mr rahul chaudhry distinguished participants senior officers of the armed forces members of the media ladies and gentlemen i think before the mood in this hall gets more serious and more somber i wanted to recall a cartoon strip that i saw yesterday uh, it was a cartoon strip on uh, andy cap that uh, beer drinking football playing guy and his frustrated wife the cartoon strip goes like this he is woken up by his wife in the middle of the night and says uh, andy andy wake up i hear i think i hear a burglar downstairs and much to the consternation of his wife he says uh, please use the frying pan and not my new pool cue <laughs> so battling burglars to the battle belt uh, battlefield management systems i think uh, we have a interesting seminar ahead and i am privileged to be here and take this opportunity to thank general vk singh pvsm avsm ysm adc chief of the army staff major general rajesh pant vsm officiating director officiating director of general information systems mr satish kaura co chairman cia national defense council and chairman sapro group and mr rahul chaudhry chairman cia defense committee and ceo tata power for inviting me today for this international seminar on the battlefield management system war is a product of its age the tools and tactics of how we fight have always evolved along with the changing technology we are in an information age and technology can be construed as the dna of the information age the information age has transformed the commercial world in all aspects the advent of internet has transgressed the traditional boundaries and we now have the luxury of bpos e banking and e governance totally dependent dependent on a secure information network the armed forces too have seen a major transformation in the way wars are being fought information and networks have emerged as important tools 
required for conducting successful operations. In the context of the military, there are several manifestations which redefine the role and task of the armed forces. While operational readiness for conventional operations is of paramount importance, there is also an increasing need to be prepared for operations other than war, such as peace enforcement, in which the armed forces are being tasked. The spectrum of conflict has expanded from traditional attritional battle spaces to asymmetrical warfare that exploits technology and the new age concept of information warfare. Our armed forces must have the capability to deal with all forms of threats and therefore the desired end state remains full spectrum dominance. Relevant to this contextual space of conflict management is the need to achieve information dominance, the building block of which is situational awareness. In modern day battlefield, it is imperative to achieve information superiority to gain tactical advantage by using decision-making tools. From the soldier in the battlefield to the commander at various levels, exchange of relevant information in real time is crucial for the success of any operation. Therefore, all modern armies strive to achieve this synergy in the battle space. Armies of a few countries have made great strides in synergizing technology to create operational information systems to suit their needs. Indian Army too is in the process of achieving this transformation and network-centric warfare capability is the key to this transformation. Apart from inducting modern weaponry, simultaneous development of information systems to exploit modern weapons and sensors is extremely important. Network-centric warfare capability is in essence integration of the sensors and shooters with the decision makers on a robust information grid. When we look at this capacity at the national level, it is not only the armed forces that need to be connected to this information grid, but also all agencies working towards the national war effort need this capability to provide the actionable information analysis of collated multi-source data to ensure that our armed forces always remain one step ahead of the adversary. Hence, we are looking at the information systems in the operational perspective as a collection of multiple interlinked systems. Within the armed forces, the defense communication systems will provide the information grid at the strategic level for the tri-services integration using the command, control, computers, communication, intelligence and interoperability system. Similar systems within each service are at various stages of development and fielding. In the hierarchy of the armed forces, the number of users keeps increasing at lower levels. The real challenge lies in providing a robust command and control system to these users. While the operational plans are decided at higher levels, their execution leading to a successful operation remains in the hands of the soldiers manning the weapon and surveillance equipment in the field. It is this cutting edge that needs to be empowered using the technology. Developing state-of-the-art capability in the field of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance is another area that will assist us in this transformation. Satellite-based surveillance and unmanned air vehicles, when clubbed with our terrestrial sensors, would provide an intense quality of information about the enemy, which in turn will lead to an enhanced situational awareness. These capabilities will also lead to better efficiency in border management as well as in dealing with internal security situations.